Why does he pronounce his name with seven syllables, though it only has six? So you really need to learn how to count. I may you say Monday and here it's Tuesday in India. You can always move over here, dude. You illiterate, and uh, I know, I struggled reading your comments, seriously. That's right, it's that time of the week. I am Jaime Rivera, this is Pocket Now, and this is the Pocket Now Daily Recap for last week. So on Monday, I asked you, what do you think about Apple's rumored strategy to sell you the Apple Watch, as rumors claim that the company is going to hire special employees to give you a more fashionable experience? We have 505 comments out of which Leo says, oh, and the only employees that could get me to buy the Apple Watch, a naked Scarlett Johansson with nothing but an Apple logo covering her lower lady bits. Oh, and she has to sell it to me for like 300 to $350 tops. And, uh... Yeah. Then Pumpkin Pitet says, Apple is trying to make the Apple Watch a luxurious accessory instead of a piece of technology. Not sure if this strategy will work, but I don't see the Apple Watch replacing an actual watch anytime soon. It can replace it in the fact that it gives you the time, but obviously to make it a luxurious watch in everything that a luxury watch has, like a Rolex, is a different story. Half that is right. Andrea says, I am an Apple hater, but credit were due. Apple is by far the best company regarding marketing strategies. If someone can pull off this item, it's them. Uh, well, Apple has had a couple of flops. Then on Tuesday, I asked you, what will Google need to do to have you buy an Android Wear smartwatch? As the rumors back then were that Google was going to launch Lollipop the next day, which it did. We'll talk about that a little later. We have 132 comments out of which Aaron says, better integration with Google Maps. I want to explore the city with my watch instead of holding my phone all the time. When I am traveling, sometimes I have to hold luggage with both hands. This is the scenario where Google Maps on watches comes very handy. You have a very interesting point. We do a lot of traveling here and mainly the reason and why we like smartwatches indeed. And then we don't like the battery life because obviously while we're traveling for hours, it becomes a problem. So yes, there is a lot of use that a smartwatch could bring, like for example, maps and navigation, true. But again, it is still undercooked. So I do agree with your point. And Jumping Mouse says, Google needs to give me a cheaper option. I'm not going to invest $200 $300 for a product that's going to have a successor in a couple of months. $100, I can live with that. Um, and then Google could say that, yes, you buy smartwatches every year every two years and they charge a lot more money for them. The price point is a good point for some, uh, but I would rather they charge me the same amount of money and gave me a better product, but that's my two cents. Then Vince O says, a week of battery life, less than $150 for good, not an LGG watch, hardware, and spec device, good looks, hint hint Moto 360, and basically that's what it's about. You have a very interesting point here, and it's the reason why, even though I use a Gear Live right now, my favorite smartwatch is still the Pebble. Uh, it looks good, it gives you a week of battery life, and it is extremely useful. Uh, but again, there are things that I wish the Pebble did that Android Wear does, and there's just so much there where we wish somebody would find the formula. Then on Wednesday, I asked you if you are now interested in an Android Wear smartwatch, as Google had just launched Android 5.0 Lollipop for Android Wear with some very interesting enhancements, and we have 266 comments out of which one of them says, improved battery life, I'll take it. Yes, battery life has improved. Not significantly, but it has improved. And Redmond Bandy says, in my humble opinion, smartwatches are still gimmicks. Until manufacturers decide to give them features that will make them useful for the average person, I will be happy with my regular watch. We have very different opinions. For example, in my case, I would rather buy a smartwatch and have some functionality than pay a lot of money or the same amount of money for a watch that just looks good and has no functionality, in addition to just giving me the time, which a smartphone can do. So that's the reason why I invest into smartwatches, but you do have a point that many people around in the world, probably most, are following. Then Rizwan says, I'm interested in the Moto 360, but I'm holding back because it's still a first generation device and you had so many good comments in the week. We did mention you last week, but this was so good I just had to mention it again. Uh, yes, I think that the biggest problem with Android Wear is that it's a first generation product. You have a very good point. I think we should wait, uh, especially for the amount of money. Definitely a good point. Then on Thursday, I asked you if you are interested in a Galaxy S6 Edge. As sources were clashing over its possibility, but uh, new rumors claim that apparently it will happen. We have 315 comments out of which 8-bit says, if lag in one screen wasn't enough, the 6 Edge is the phone for you. More the screen, more the lag. Touch with S flies away. Uh, yeah. 
good point. Hopefully Lollipop fixes things for Samsung or else I wish they would just adopt, you know, stock Android. And Jonathan says, I don't think it's necessary to make a Galaxy S6 Edge. You have the Note Edge already. Just be satisfied with that. And yeah, I mean, if they haven't sold many Note Edges, then what would be the point? Agree. And what's up 4488 says, the Galaxy S6 Edge sure would be an interesting phone, but in comparison to other phones, it's not interesting enough for me to get it if they keep on having things like TouchWiz without a change. Uh, true. The problem is this, without TouchWiz, it's not like if stock Android supports, you know, touch, you know, the, the edge display and everything, TouchWiz has to exist. They just have to fix it. And finally on Friday, I asked you if you like being forced to purchase a phablet if you want a Nexus, as the news are that the Nexus 5 production has halted, and once those uh, stocks run out, that's all you got. We have 735 comments out of which Sunny says, Nexus 5 already had good specifications and was plenty powerful for the price. It should have kept it as an alternative to the gigantic Nexus 6, just like Apple kept the iPhone 5S as an alternative to the newer 6 and 6S. Bad move, Google, and I think all of us agree with that. I mean, why just ditch the Nexus 5? But then again, I think the phone didn't sell really well and that had a lot to do with it, but it wasn't the market's fault. They had so much trouble putting it in the market that that's the reason why people just forgot about that. And Aerodynamics says, I think the fact that Google stopped production of the Nexus 5 pretty much confirms that Google will launch a successor within 2015. Not necessarily. We know Google, and Google doesn't really do that. And then Bruno Gomez says, in my opinion, the Nexus 6 destroyed the Nexus concept. The Nexus 5 was the flagship killer, the pure, smooth, stock Android experience, the good price. The Nexus 6 is just your typical flagship, very disappointing. Not necessarily. I come from the time of the Nexus 1. That was my first Android phone. And uh, back then, obviously in very different dimensions, Google followed the same strategy and didn't find success. They've done it with every single Nexus product later. No success. I think that Google is not really out there to make money and what they want is to show people what Android can do, hence the reason why we need a flagship. But I do agree that uh, they should have kept things with the Nexus 5 or at least launch a successor or a revamp uh, like the iPhone 5C, but then Apple you know, they didn't have success with that. So there's just so much on the table and we have a company that doesn't really care. And that's really the problem. That's it for our Pocket Now Daily Recap. Thank you very much for watching. A couple of tips if you want your comments to be featured. Number one, keep them short. Number two, stick to the point. Number three, try to get some thumbs up. It helps us spot them a lot easier. You can also follow us on social media and subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. You can follow me on Twitter, Jaime underscore Rivera. Please give this video a thumbs up if you liked what you saw. I am Jaime Rivera. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully we will see you next week. I mean, we'll be holidays.